Hi, it's Mike from Gear Diary. We've got the new mini key for the iPhone 5, and as you might be able to tell, it is a case, it is a hardware keyboard all in one for the iPhone 5. There are only two questions that matter. First off, would anyone want to use this? And second off, is it any good? Okay, so, we've got the new mini key for the iPhone 5. Let's take a quick look at it. I've already gone through the process of setting it up once, and it really is just your basic. It's a slider, so you've got an iPhone 5 case, you've got the keyboard, and these keyboards have got some amount of texture, some amount of shape to them to, to help you get kind of the feel for it. So I'll take iPhone 5, and it actually does pop in relatively easily. I had somewhat of a hard time getting it out um, when I first tried using it. There is a power on key. Let's see if it remembers my uh, my hookup. I don't know whether or not I... Well, let's see what I need to do here. So things you can do. Turn on the backlight and so let's go into my Bluetooth settings and you may not be able to see but it has a new mini key connected. So from here I can go back home I can go into to the notes app and let's just go ahead and create a new note and simply you can start typing away and you know it works about as well and I'll bring it a little bit closer see if you can hear there's a little bit of flex to the to the clicking of the keyboard it is definitely not um, not up to the standard of say the droid 4 or something like that but it's better than the original droid that's for sure uh, somewhere in between those sorts of keyboards the keys are of decent size uh, reasonably sensible layout you've actually got a home key right on there which again very convenient so if you need to jump from app to app uh, if you notice you're not rotating um, here which makes sense you're not rotating the home home screen but in terms of you know apps they do rotate properly as you'd expect um, however sliding this thing in doesn't suddenly change the keyboard it still thinks hey I'm Bluetooth connected to this so simply folding it up doesn't help you at all. The only way to get off of this keyboard, and again, I do like the fact that once you've enabled the backlight, which is just a function key, that it does control, you know, the backlight turns on and anytime you touch a key afterwards, it re-enables. Uh, in order to get this thing off again, you flip that, turn it back on, and let's see, there we go. Here's our keyboard back. But so long as you have the Bluetooth connection between the two, just like any external Bluetooth keyboard, um, it is thinking that it wants to use that to communicate. So anything other than that, you've got your power, you've got your Bluetooth light come on, and we are back to, let's see, there we go. So now we're back, got rid of the keyboard, and we're back to being able to type. Uh, full range keyboard, you have shift keys, you have functions for numeric keys and a whole range of other special keys. Um, the question really, okay, so there we go. It functions, it easily connects via Bluetooth and maintain that connection. The first time I opened it was yesterday and I actually then used my external Logitech since then. I used uh, some external Bluetooth headphones since then. So I've used a number of other Bluetooth devices in the meantime between the last time I used this. It still remembered that. I've had some devices where um, so long as you only use that device, it would recognize it, but then in between it would get a little bit flaky. Um, so it's functional. It doesn't add too much heft to it. As you can see, it adds about a, a quarter of an inch to the iPhone 5. And compared to something like uh, the original Droid, we had the original Droid, I actually gave that away yesterday 
to a friend who is on Verizon whose iPhone 4 uh, they dropped and they're getting the screen repaired and um, so we gave them the old droid compared to that brick even with the external uh, device here it really doesn't feel too bad it does it thicken it up it certainly does more so than even adding on an otter box or something like that question though and that I found myself thinking about is would I use this well the answer is no and the reason I say that and the reason I, I pause for a second is what I said earlier was I hooked it up last night I took it off so I've already taken it off and then I used a different keyboard during the day it didn't offer me the utility and the, the feel the functional feel I the feel of the keyboard a little bit squishy a little bit flexy um, and really the, the most amazing thing is I've gotten used to typing on the screen for this. I still do better on, you know, say my, my iPad, I would do much better typing on that than on this, but still not to the point of really caring to have a slide out keyboard. The iPhone is not designed in a way that really makes an external keyboard something to deal with. So what you end up doing is learning how to work around the built-in soft keys. So that's what I've done over the last four months that I've had this. And as a result, suddenly, as a longtime physical keyboard guy, I grabbed this and I used it for a while. You know, I'm texting my family, doing some things like that. And the next thing I know, I'm working to take it off and not really looking to put it on this morning as I'm heading out to work, sitting on the table just waiting for me to come home and do this review. Would you want this? That depends. Do you currently have or have immediately had a physical keyboard device? Then you might want this. If you're already comfortable using a, a touchscreen device, then no, you really don't. Uh, for the legions of people who are returning their new BlackBerry Z10s, hey, you know, possibly. But for long-time iPhone users, definitely not. I really see this as a as a case of something that um, perhaps is is a little bit late to the party, um, something whose time you know is come and gone a little bit. That people really have gotten used to just working with the keyboards on these screens. Predictive type is good, autocorrect, and that's always something worth noting. As soon as you plug in an external keyboard, you lose autocorrect or you lose the majority of autocorrect and therefore you have to be more careful. I find that my ability to trust in the iPhone's autocorrect is worth more than typing on a physical keyboard externally. So anyway, that's my two cents on this keyboard. Uh, that's again the new mini key for the iPhone 5 and you can look for the link and the pricing in, in the body of the review as well as on the YouTube video. Put it in that description. This is Mike from Gear Diary. Thanks for watching.